So this morning, you know, let's turn, um, let's turn to the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms, chapter 90. The book of Psalms, uh, it's a prayer uh, by Moses, the man of God, it says. Prayer by Moses, the man of God. Uh, We'll read from verses 12 to 17. Psalms, chapter 90, verses 12 to 17. Teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. Lord, how long turn and have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your faithful love, so that we may shout with joy and be glad all our days. Make us rejoice for as many days as you have humbled us, for as many years as we have seen adversity. Let your work be seen by your servants and your splendor by their children. Let the favor of the Lord, our God, be on us. Establish for us the work of our hands. Establish the work of our hands. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you have brought us here, Lord, in your presence. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we are here at the end of this year, Lord, to praise you and to worship you and to honor you, Lord. Just to thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts for this year and how you have brought us through this year. Lord, as we look forward, Lord, as your word says, Lord, help us to develop wisdom in our hearts. Help us, Lord. We need your wisdom. We need your wisdom more than ever, Lord. And as we come here, Lord, that you would speak to us, that you would point us, that you would show us, so that, Lord, we will be walking in wisdom, Lord, this coming year also. We commit this time into your hands, Bless each of your dear children, Lord, who are here. Be with them. Speak to them, O Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the <clears throat> title of this morning's message is taken from that verse from Psalms chapter 90, verse 12. It says, Teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. In some Bibles it says, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And in some Bibles it says that we may present a heart of wisdom. Okay. So, what does God wants to say to us? You know, we are here at a very crucial time of this year. You know, it's been a, it's been a very uh, strange year. I mean, strange is a very uh, modest term. But, you know, it's been a year of uh, you know, a lot of pain for a lot of people. Just, I want to show just a couple of uh, pictures, you know, from the World Bank. Usually World Bank comes up with a report at the end of the year about uh, how things are going globally. So here, <clears throat> you see this picture, you know, don't need to go into detail. But just basically it says all around the world, it's taken the people of all the world and categorized them into five sections, you know, from the poor to the richest. And they're comparing their 2019 income to their 2021 income. And if you are seeing, almost the yellow line is where everybody's income has gone. So from the poorest to the most suffering, the people who suffered the most are the poorest, which is on the left side, the poorest 20%. They've lost the most amount of income. And also the second 20%, you know, they have also lost a lot of uh, their growth. You know, what they thought is the blue line has become the yellow line. What they thought is going to be in 2021 has turned out to be the yellow line. And also the, even the richest 20% also has lost uh, quite a bit, you know, but they can manage, right? But um, just look at all the things, you know, because of COVID, you know, the poorest 20% of the world have suffered the most. And also there's another image, you know, which is because of this, and it's because of this, if you turn to the next image, the worldwide increase in debt, it's called the debt to GDP ratio. Now, this is another critical ratio that many governments and countries and in fact companies and families also need to watch. But uh, if you look at the private debt and government debt and especially if you look at private debt, that means people are taking a lot of loans. The people and because people are not able to have income, people are in a lot of loans. And so this is just two pictures, uh, two images that just, just touches only the surface of 
the things that have happened in the last two years. And it is not just this, you know, but the, this year has been a year of lot of pain, you know, for people, both believers and unbelievers, okay? Not just, not just uh, unbelievers, but everybody. It's a year of pain. It's been a year of loss. It's been a year of tears. It's been a year of suffering. It's been a year of craziness. If you remember what happened in April and May, you remember the craziness. I mean, just like the people just making calls and just like, you know, like just uh, unable to get uh, just air to breathe, you know, the oxygen to breathe and to get blood and, 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 and to get medicines. Just crazy, crazy, crazy. And then it's also been a glimpse for godly people of the last days. It's just how the beginning of birth pangs, you know, the Bible says. It's like, you know, the glimpse of what it's going to be in the future. And also, above all things, you know, year of fear. The fear of people losing jobs, you know, fear of not being able to provide for children, not being able to send children to school. I've seen so many parents, you know, who basically not sent their children for two years of school has gone. Two years of school has gone. gone. Like, you know, like literally we hear every week, you know, we hear families, uh, they're saying, what are your children doing? You know, we, uh, you know, they are playing at home. We cannot send them to school because the, uh, I mean, obviously there's one source of income and they cannot send children to school. So this is the year, you know, it has been. But also on the other side, for children of God, like us, you know, followers of God, trusting in God and believing in Him, in him, him only, you know, it's been a year of absolute trust in the midst of our helplessness. We are so helpless, but we absolutely, you know, I can say for sure that many of us here have grown in trusting the Lord. Trusting the Lord in our adversity. Trusting the Lord in, 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 our, in our pain and, and, and not knowing what's going to happen and trusting the Lord. And I, I really believe that many people have grown in their faith in the Lord this year because of all these pains. And also this is, year has been a lot of learning for a lot of us. You know, what we thought, okay, 2019, you know, if you go back to that previous image, it's like, you know, we thought everything's going to be like blue. Like, you know, the sky is blue, my life is going to be going, you know, there's this nice trend upward and everything. But suddenly, uh, we learn so many things about life. We learn what is important. I think 2021 has taught us what is important in life. And especially it's taught me. And it's taught us what is the most important thing. It's basically helped us to rearrange our priorities in life. Rearrange what, what is important and what should I be focused on. It's basically, it's like, like a sledgehammer coming and like getting my attention. Like, okay, this is what is important in life. Okay, this is what is not important in life. Okay, now let's, let's focus on what is important. So it's, this year has been like that. And also this year has been a lot of serving. You know, we've been serving um, just, just the church, you know, just rose up and we served. Many people helping each other, not staying inside their homes, but just going and serving others. You know, just uh, not being comfortable. You know, it's been a, a year where the church has done a lot of things. You know, especially in our church, you know, many of you, you know, have, have helped, you know, uh, financially. And you have also, um, also done physical labor and basically going and helping people, calling people, uh, praying for people daily. And, and all these things, you know, it's just been a year of serving. And also, you know, it's been a year of, uh, like, you know, praying and, uh, and, and worshipping the Lord. Praying and worshipping the Lord because we could not trust the doctors. We could not trust people. We could not trust our money. We could not trust our anything that we thought it's going to give us some comfort. You know, doctors' words are not going to give us comfort. The money that we have in the bank account is not going to give us comfort if we don't have breath. If we don't have something, you know. So, so it's really... It's like, you know, it's a very critical point in our life that we understand. If we don't learn lessons from this year, I don't know what year will teach us another lesson. I, I mean, there, there might not be another lesson. So this has been a year of growing and just surviving and watching people and all these things. You know, it's just a thing. That's why the Bible says, teach us, O Lord, to number our days carefully. It says, teach us, O Lord, to number our days carefully. Almost like counting days. It's almost like, it's almost like, you know, looking back and saying, Lord, 
what is it that you know what is it that it's important in 2021 what are these lessons for 2021 that i need to carry in my heart what is it that you are telling me what is it that you are telling me with a loud speaker that it's like right in my face that's just blaring the noise what is it that i need to learn lord what is it that i need to understand and psalm is to know like you know there is also in 143 i think psalm 143 Psalm 143 verse 5 Psalm 143 verse 5 it says <clears throat> Actually if you read from verse 4 you know it's he's going through a it's a cry for help you know it's it's something that's uh, he's he's going through a lot of anguish and dismay it's almost like as if when we were going through in the times of April and May um my spirit is weak within me my heart is overcome with dismay i remember the days of old I meditate on all you have done. I reflect on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. I am like parched land before you. Answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Don't hide your face from me or I will be like those who are going down to the pit. Just a it's a cry and it's a deep uh, cry of despair of people who are in pain. people who have lost someone people who are um, are going through a suffering time you know like like we like we see in 2020 and 2021 and 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 all these things is right in front of us you know so every image that we see i always believe everything that we see everything that we notice is god's purpose if you are hearing something if you are if god brings certain situation in front of you it is because god's ordained you uh, ordained it sorry ordained it to bring it in front of you it is not because it's everything is happening randomly oh, okay some i just came here and, and i i did this and i did i did that and like i saw someone today no 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 it's god who arranges div- divine appointments divine appointments when my dad <coughs> was young you know he lost his father my grandfather passed away and uh, my his mom my grandma married again because she was very young 18 years old and you know those days uh, they used to suffer a lot and so with her second marriage you know she had uh, one daughter and she had another son and she had another daughter who passed away and she had another son and also she had another daughter you know so so there are like you know five children she had in the second marriage and in that now what happened but lot of poverty you know those days lot of poverty and uh, suffering and so the the third daughter someone noticed her and said like you know um, you're suffering so much you know uh, and and your husband just passed away and nobody to provide for income for the family so why don't you send your third daughter uh, to adoption and so they arranged adoption and they went and the and the and the, and the young girl you know she went into america uh, being adopted by a family there and those days it was very different you know 19 i'm talking about 1960s and she got adopted and then what happened um at the same time after she got adopted within few years she lost her one of the other sons because of a black cobra that bit her you know bit bit her son and he died on the spot so she lost one daughter to adoption she lost another uh, daughter i um, mean another son and then uh, she lost another daughter because of childbirth at uh, during uh, during childbirth and so she's now left with only two children from the second marriage and my dad from the first marriage and so uh, everybody is studying in orphanage because they don't have money to uh, thing and it's lot of pain and many very many people were saying like why did you send your daughter to adoption see you lost two children after that and you should not have sent and all these things so she was in lot of pain like almost like in i can see her like you know i i've talked to many people my elderly people and like how she was going through those days very very tough days um and uh, you know what i mean see this is the thing you know you cannot Uh, like why i why i'm saying this point is like we cannot imagine why we meet certain people in our life and 18 years later no i mean like almost 20 years later my dad you know he he uh, he he got he was studying in orphanage he he graduated he got a degree and all and he wanted to serve the lord and uh, but also he wanted to provide for our family and so he said like you know let me go to america and meet my step sister you know who's there and obviously you know, she was there and uh, my dad was already had a job here he took a leave and then he went there and 
he met there and then he he stayed with them for few months and then before he was about to come back uh to india uh, he just happened to go to a church just just randomly i'm saying this is like random like you know just like hey on a on a on, on i think on a wednesday or the sunday i think he just wanted to go to a church and he just walked into a church and uh, that pastor of the church is in bangalore at that time <laughs> he is wanting to find a ministry opportunity in bangalore and my dad is there in the doorstep of that church there and why did my dad go there to that small town in america all there are many cities in, and he goes to a small town in a very small place and to a small church like very less than 100 people in that church and he just stumbles into and then he says hey i'm i'm guna and all that and you know that's how my dad met pastor bob and that's how calvary chapel started <laughs> so i mean like i mean who could write the story right i mean who could write the story it all started from a poor widow who lost her daughter and sent her away you know into a country that she probably will never go and she didn't go and you know 20 years later you know all these things work out and that's why i say this is called divine appointments you know this is just one story i mean if you dig through your family's history you will find lot of uh, divine appointments so that's the thing the bible says remember the days of your old remember the days of your old we are always in a hurry like we are always like looking ahead like you know what's next 2022 here i come bye bye 2021 i hate you <laughs> it's not like that it's like it's like you know we are always like like hurrying and going and all those things but we don't take a step and say like, hey where i have come from how god has worked and how he's weaving something in my life how his story is being worked in my life how god's story is being working in my life and almost like a like a tapestry like you know you you have this ta- this cloth and then you start to weave and the weave and then you don't know what ha- what's happening it's very ugly it looks very ugly but in the end you know it's a beautiful tapestry and in the behind you know you see all this threads you know that are that are that are like you know if, if you seen beautiful tapestry on the front it looks so beautiful but if you just take a look at the back it's so messy it is so like you know there is no connecting there is no connection there is no uh, there is no reason for any colors and everything it's all just haphazard it looks but on the front it looks so beautiful and you know that's what god's doing you know god's writing a story in your life god's writing a story in each one of our lives and he is doing that you know he is doing that patiently and i pray that you know we will take a step back and say lord teach me to number my days carefully so that i may develop wisdom in my heart so that i can develop wisdom in my heart my life is not always like 100 kilometers per hour my life is not about i am having this i am having this degree i got this education i got this money i got this position and all that but it's just a story my life is a story that god is writing maybe we might not all have books from our lifestyle i mean like life there are many biographies of uh, great men and, and and women but maybe we might not have an autobiography or biography but in god's eyes there's a book and there's a story that god's writing and in each one of us like you know that's why you know um, uh, here here david is he says not lord i remember the days of old he says i remember the days of old i meditate on all you have done and i reflect on the work of your hands so so the end of the year it's a year of reflection how god's brought you for the last 10 years god god god's brought you to the people that you know how god's brought you to 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 meet certain people who's made some impact in your life and how god's working a story in their life but at the same time god's doing that same story in your life also there's a story that's going on it's not about uh, january february march and then december and then happy new year uh, let's let's party no it's not that it's a story that god's writing it is across you know it, it started a long time back and it's going to continue and where are we in god's story and that's the thing you know here he says you know to remember the days of old to 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 number our days carefully to know ne- to know where we have come from to know our struggles in the past our struggles 10 years ago 15 years ago maybe the struggle today is very different but can you remember the struggle of 10 years ago and how god came through and how his story played out in your life and isn't it the same god who is still in control who was 10 years ago with your life who is here again 10 years later and that's the thing that gives us courage that gives us hope and at the end of the year you know that is what we want to just god i want to remember i want to meditate on your works 
i want to i want to meditate on the on the work of your hands on the work of your hands of god's hands so it is basically god's hands like you know god's hands orchestrating is like almost like this puppet show right i mean I, literally it's not a good example but like you know it's almost god orchestrating everything in our life where should we go how should we go and all that okay so now how do we look at tomorrow how do we look at tomorrow you know the first thing is that so remembering the past i already mentioned this you know i'm remembering the past uh, it's actually not chapter 90 it's chapter 90 uh, verse 12 it's not one <clears throat> and also 143 uh, yeah 143 verse 5 so so remembering this past and is thanking god for that you know when we remember what i mean like you are here we are sitting here and the bible says you know if it is god's will you will live if it is god's will you will live in james chapter 4 so it is god's will that we are here today and when some people are not here again it is god's will we cannot ask the potter the pot cannot ask the potter why is why am i in this shape why am i round shaped why am i uh, in a rectangular shape or a square shape the bible says you know you how, can a pot can a, can a clay uh, ask the potter why i am like this no we cannot the bible says that if it is the lord's will we will live and we are here if god's given us life today it is for a purpose it is a story that god's playing out that's a story that god wants to continue and you know it is not only going to end in this earth the story is going to continue for eternity that is our hope that that it's for eternity to eternity you are god it's not from my one year old to my uh, till i'm 80 years old or 50 years old you are god no i am from eternity before i was born god was there and after i am gone from this earth god's going to be there and i am going to be in his presence to be with lord in, in his presence is greater than to be in this world is what apostle paul says because he's seen the full gamut you know he's seen the end to the end he's seen the alpha and the omega so for him he's like oh lord oh, that is so much more greater but if i'm here alive today it's for a purpose that you are doing something today for this you know if i'm here in bangalore or in this street if i'm if i'm here there is something lord and that's what god wants to do okay so that's the first thing and the second thing i wanted to talk about is that is that not planning a not like you know like uh, look at this verse you know I, I mean i don't need to explain anything just look at proverbs chapter seven, 27 verse 1 proverbs chapter 27 verse 1 now sometimes you know we just have to shut up and let the bible speak <laughs> don't boast about tomorrow for you don't know what a day might bring <laughs> don't boast about tomorrow but you don't know what a day might bring it's just a day one day we don't know what tomorrow might bring so don't boast about it this is what the bible says you know i think this is kjv yeah it's king james version yeah uh, for thou knowest not what a day might bring forth is there a different version like esv or something if it, if it's not okay fine that's fine and also there's another scripture that we want to go to james again that verse that i mentioned james chapter 4 james chapter 4 <coughs> verse 13 james chapter 4 verse 13 there are two guys here talking see what they are talking come now you who say today or tomorrow we will travel to such and such a city and spend a year there and do business and make a profit yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring what your life will be for you are like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you should say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or do that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance and all such boasting is evil. So it is sin to know the good and yet not do it. So the Bible clearly says that don't boast about tomorrow. Don't plan for tomorrow don't you know don't don't like you know like okay uh, i am going to be here like you know i'm going to be there tomorrow and you know what happened there is a very clear picture in uh, a, a, a connection here in isaiah chapter 30 isaiah chapter 30 what is happening verses 9 and 10 if you can turn to 9 and 10 isaiah chapter 30 
verses 9 and 10 and i'll tell you the context before going there god is not a happy with certain some people <laughs> who are the, who are the people that god's not happy with let's read uh, isaiah chapter 30 verse 9 and 10 they are rebellious people deceptive children children who do not want to listen to the lord's instruction they say to the seers do not see and to the prophets do not prophesy the truth to us tell us flattering things prophesy illusions you know this is what the lord saying why is the lord so upset here why is the lord upset with these people because these people what's happening the children of uh, the people of juda is being at- attacked by the kingdom of assyria juda is the children of god being attacked by a huge army lakhs and lakhs of soldiers going to attack them and coming they hear the news that they are going to come and they are going to attack them and at that time there are some godly people who are saying no trust in the lord don't trust in people so what judas leaders did the king he started to send people to egypt to seek help you know they started like you know in, in chapter 30 it says like you know they take lot of money and they are trying to please egypt and say king of egypt come and save us this assyrian king is coming and he's going to destroy our homes destroy our families destroy everything please come and save us and so this egyptians you know they, they they're like you know god's already promised to the children of israel that you should not never put foot in egypt what is egypt in biblical symbolism egypt is the world is the world the worldly lifestyle the worldly desires because god has taken us out from the world and has brought us and is protecting us in his glory okay and but when we go back to the world you know god's not happy with that god's not happy when we when our desires when our lifestyle when our dressing when our when our talk you know when our when our when our ambitions everything is like a worldly person except that my name is christian you know god's not happy with that and these people why they are rebellious people they are telling to the prophets prophesy good things to us we don't want to hear the truth good stuff you know it says you know flattering it says flattering things it says prophesy illusions verse 10 it's almost like telling illusions you know tell illusions to us tell us that egypt will save us oh please tell us prophet please tell us that egypt will save us please tell us that i can trust in my job please tell me that i can trust in my intelligence please trust me that i can trust in horses and faster horses of egypt because egypt had horses that was really fast but we also know where some of those horses they landed the chariots under the bottom of the red sea but still people have not learned the lesson they still are trusting in their chariots and so god is really upset here with his people like like hey i i'm there i'm waiting and i want to save you and here you are trusting in your own strength and asking help from egypt people going there and asking them advice here and this and that where is the heart of wisdom in this as the bible says do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day will bring and that's the thing many times you know so you might ask me brother is it wrong for a christian to plan for the new year or plan for five year have a five year plan or a 10 year plan if the lord wills that's all if the lord wills you know today many of christians are frustrated because their desires did not work out the way they intended oh i planned like this i thought you know by my age of 30 i'll be like this no if god's will god's working a story you know in your life and god's doing some things and he is with you and he is in you and he wants to bless you and that's the plan you know that's the thing and he wants to take care of you he will not leave you he will not forsake the righteous i will never leave you nor forsake you the bible says never the word never means what never i will never leave you never forsake you is what the lord says and so here these children they receive all these pro- promises of god but they say like, okay okay thank you for all the promises but i'm going to trust in egypt i'm going to trust in the chariot oh look at the chariot oh look at the horses how beautiful they are and you know god uses that word you know um in 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 verse 16 it says we will ride on fast horses and those who pursue will will be faster and god's this is god's reply he's like you know they god's going to 
not going to make the, i mean god's going to wipe out egypt actually we put, egypt gets wiped out before they come to juda and you know basically they try they are trusting in a defeated power which is egypt the world cannot help us the world the, the the love of the father is not in them the people who put their trust in the world the love of the father is not in them the bible says and my dear brothers and sisters like what is the worldly things you know one of the things that is bothering the church today is the attachment of worldliness with godliness it cannot be we cannot be godly and at the same time be worldly i cannot be watching stuff on on the internet and on on my streaming platforms and i can still be godly and still be able to please the lord because i cannot put myself into situations which i should not put and still be able to live a godly life and that's the thing that's why it's such a such a very big tragedy today that many christians are seeking egypt a lifestyle egyptian lifestyle egyptian lifestyle of meat and endless meat you know um, uh, endless prosperity and all these things and here god's people we are called as exiles we are called strangers in this earth and basically we are a stranger in this earth we are not a, it's not a, we are not living in buildings even though we might live in literal buildings but our mindset is we are living in tents we are basically tent dwellers Christians are tent dwellers Christians are strangers because why Christians are according to Philippians you know uh, in the book of Philippians Paul writes that we are citizens of heaven because that's our heavenly home that is a permanent place this is a stranger i'm just a passer passing through i'm just a journeyman here i'm just a journeyman and many times you know in 2022 doesn't remind you of that you are a journeyman i don't know which other year will remind us that so the bible says don't boast about tomorrow so okay let's come back to today then let's come back to today where i want to spend some time and we'll close today so what's about today brother so what is god's plan for today so we remember the past we meditate on the past that god's done in our lives so thankful for god's story playing out in our life we are thankful for breath that we can live and we can glorify him today and that we, the story continues on this earth uh, but also we want to be careful that we want don't want to boast about tomorrow that's why i'm really scared many times to make predictions you know some people make predictions if, if it's from the lord yes if it's a prophecy from the lord you know it will be fulfilled 100% not 70% 60% 100% but god says you know i mean there there is there is there is the there is that uh, thing with with many christians today brother prophesy prophesy tell me tell me today only tell me today what's going to happen tomorrow you know if the lord's will you know he will tell you know there are many prophets like elisha elijah that that god said certain things and there are sometimes god withheld certain things and we have to accept that and many times like you know it's like you know our life will never move past if i don't have a prophecy prophetic utterance on my life so no if it's if it's the lord's will i will receive the prophecy i will receive the vision i will receive the dream if it's not lord's will he wants to play it out in a different way so be it so be it today many people are running after these things this words you know words of flattery and prophetic illusions we have to be very careful we have to be very careful that we are not being misled because we don't want to boast about tomorrow because my focus is today today in hebrews chapter 4 you don't need to turn there in hebrews chapter 4 the writer says that there are people who could not enter the rest of god because of disobedience and unbelief disobedience and unbelief the most two deadly things of a christian life and because they could not enter the rest of god why because they didn't listen to the word of the lord today so the bible says today if you will hearken your hearts to my voice today today it's today it's what is important today is what's important not the last not how it's going to be in the future because god knows how he's going to do it and so what's good tomorrow so what's going to be today you know so that's uh, we are going to look at and then we'll wrap it up today is developing a heart of wisdom for today developing a heart of wisdom for today what is it lord today so in um, <clears throat> 
in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, we see two things. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. So this is what the Lord is saying. So this is the Lord's plan for today. For the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel has said, You will be delivered by returning and resting. Your strength will lie in quiet confidence, but you are not willing. <laughs> this is all, God also says, like, you know, this, is, this is my plan, but you guys are not up for my plan. So, in returning and rest. Okay, that's the first part. That's the first part. The first part is that I return. Also, in some Bibles, it says repent. You know, what is re return? Turning around, which means repenting and resting. Repenting and resting. Martin Luther, when he wrote the, when he, uh, when he, uh, I think it's Martin Luther. Yeah, when he, when he, when he wrote the 95 Thesis and, and, nailed it in the wall of uh, the, the, the door of the church in Wittenberg. You know, the first one was a Christian's lifestyle. I think he says something like this, and I'm paraphrasing. Christian's lifestyle is a one of confession and repentance. That's the very first point out of the 95 uh, theses, I mean 95 words, uh, 95 sentences that he wrote. Okay, it's a lifestyle of repentance and confession to the Lord and resting in the Lord. So here, God saying, hey, don't go to the world, don't trust in faster horses, don't trust in the chariots, but return to me, come back to me. I am here, the temple is standing, the temple is still there, the Shekinah glory is there, God is there, so return to me and rest in me. And many times in this world of hurry, like you know, always thinking about ahead, like oh, what's going to happen and, and planning and, and all these things, you know, this amazing place where God says, you know, come to me and rest. Come to me and rest. God's calling each one of us. So is there any restless areas in our life? Restlessness that is found in our life. Is there any area where we are too confident? And that I'm like going ahead with gungo. Or, or we need to come and take a step back and say, Lord, I want to come and rest in you. I just want to come back and rest in you. I just want to come back and understand what is the situation. I just want to rewind a little bit, uh, look at the days of past, not boast about tomorrow, and see how your hands are working in my life, how your hand is playing, you know, how, you are, how you are mapping many things in my life. And Lord, I want to return to you. I want to return to you. And the second thing is, the strength and quietness and trust there is a strength in quietness and trust, right? Your strength will lie in quiet confidence. That's what it says in same verse, chapter 30, verse 50. Again, where is the Christian strength? In quietness. It's not in, uh, in, it's not in rushing and running around, you know. It's, it's quietness, this is confidence. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. This confidence that my God's going to take care of me. You know why? Why your God is going to take care of us? Why our God is going to take care of us? Look at verse 18. Chapter 30, verse 18. This is an amazing verse. This is like, this is the key verse for today. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Therefore, the Lord is waiting to show you mercy. <laughs> I mean like, amen? The Lord is waiting to show you mercy. Verse 18, right? Yeah. And he is rising up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a just God. All who wait patiently for him are blessed or happy, it says in some Bible. All, it, says, it doesn't say some. It says all who wait patiently for God to work and, to hand to, and his hand to move and to do things are blessed. Who are the blessed people? All who wait patiently for the people. Many times we say, oh, I'm not blessed. Look at my pocket. I don't have any. Look at my account. No, no, no. All who wait patiently for the Lord are the happy people. They are the happy people. They are the blessed people. Have we forgotten that rest? Have we forgotten that there is a God who is waiting? There is a God who is waiting to show mercy. There is a God who who's, who's, who's rising up to show you compassion. And here there is a God. Like, you know, he's, like, he's telling to the Isaiah, the prophet. And nobody wants to listen to the prophet Isaiah. Everybody wants to listen to the plans of Egyptians, how they are going to descend and how they are going to destroy the Assyrians. And all these things. 
people who give false like in it says what what does it say prophecy illusions people who prophesy illusions and so so here god is speaking through isaiah and he is saying hey i am waiting for my people i am waiting for my child to come to me and let him know that i am doing something in his life i am delaying something in his life i am holding something in his life or i am i am opening some new door in his life i am closing certain doors in your life and it's because you know god is waiting to show mercy and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters is that that we have if we go back to that you know we have this confidence because we have a god who's waiting for us and it is our job to return and to repent and to rest in him and just say lord i want to rest in your work your work alone nothing no none of my good deeds none of my ministry none of my um singing skills or preaching skills or my my marketing skills or anything no i just want to rest in you i know you're doing a story i know you're writing something and you're writing something amazing and i have confidence in you that all who wait patiently for him are blessed all all i mean it doesn't say it doesn't say hindu or christian or muslim or anybody it says all who wait patiently for him are happy all and the third thing that really uh, i want to focus on little bit also is 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 why in 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 psalm uh, <clears throat> let's go back to psalm 90 verse 14 psalm 90 verse 14 so in the midst of this pain in the in the prayer sorry in the, in the midst of this prayer you know moses writes something that's very important here he says <clears throat> lord how long turn and have compassion on your servants in verse 14 it says satisfy us in the morning with your faithful love so that we may shout and with joy and be glad all our days satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning satisfy us with the loving kindness in the morning what is the meaning of morning is it like literally morning yes it could be literally morning like early morning but also it's a, it's a time of quiet time right morning is very quiet if you are, have you gone on the streets at 5 am i know many of us you know we've not seen that but it's very quiet in the morning there is no the world has not risen up you know the world has not awakened like there is no noise it's very quiet and so and so what what he saying lord when the world is very quiet when the world has not woken up you satisfy me with your loving kindness you satisfy me with your loving kindness speak to me so i'm not literally saying 5 am or 6 am you should have devotions if you can it's awesome because you know because you have a full day ahead of you you have a full day ahead of you like you don't know what the day is going to bring because bible says you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring and the same way you don't know what the day is going to bring it's going to be some disappointment you might probably have a phone call or you might have someone who irritates you or you might hear something from your boss you don't know but in the morning what happens you are being satisfied you are not waiting for satisfaction from the world by the end of the day but you are being satisfied by the loving kindness of god in the morning lord satisfy me satisfy my soul with your loving kindness that i may shout with joy and be glad don't shout at 5 am in the morning <laughs> but you shout joyfully in your heart and so and so satisfy us lord in the morning in the morning just just that loving kindness let me be drenched in your mercy let me be soaked in your grace and so that's the thing you know when we have this this amazing relationship with god that he satisfies us in the morning when i say morning again i'm not saying the literal morning but it is when the whole world is quiet when everything is calm in my heart the worldly thoughts are not there in my heart when it's all calm when god only is there and i'm satisfied in his loving kindness okay there's another verse you know isaiah chapter um 33 33 verse 2 i think yeah is uh, just few chapters later yeah isaiah chapter 33 verse to yeah uh, lord <clears throat> isaiah 33 verse 2 lord be gracious to us we wait for you be our strength every morning and our salvation in time of trouble be our strength lord because i'm telling you these days you know are, are, we get discouraged so easily there are so many things to discourage us there are so many people and situations and events that are about to discourage us 
And so we say, Lord, we wait for you. Be our strength every morning. And Lord, our salvation in time of trouble. Trouble. And also if you see, uh, we saw Psalm 143, right? Psalm 143 we saw. Lord, uh, he's like, say, Lord, my spirit is gone. He's saying and all those things in verse 4. But you look at verse 8. You know, what a beautiful verse is verse 8. Verse 8. Psalm 143, verse 8. This is the answer for all his, for all his heart problems, for all his dismay. He says, let me experience your loving kindness in the morning for I trust in you. And it says, reveal to me the way I should go. He says like, Lord, you show me today is, what is today? 26 December. Lord, I come to you. I trust in you. Show me which way I should go on the 26th of December. Show me which way I should go on the 26th, 27th of December. 28th of December. Not boasting about tomorrow, but receiving God's mercies for that day. That day. Because God's going to give us grace to face that. You might say, oh brother, how, I'm, so, I'm so much in dismay. I'm so much in trouble. My heart is so restless. I don't know how I'm going to face today. And But here God is saying, hey, remember my loving kindness. You, you trust in me and, and, and I'm, I'm going to show you the way. And then finally, I want to say and close, is Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 to 21. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 to 21. And we'll wrap up today. And this is the final thing. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you go there, it says, <clears throat> this is almost like a messianic prophecy. You know, it's almost like a prophetic word, you know, that's been written here in Isaiah chapter 30, uh, verse, verse, verse uh, 18 to, uh, not 18, sorry. Let's look at um, uh, 19 onwards. Let's look at 19 to 21, I'll read, and you just follow along, follow, along, follow along with me. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 19 to 21. Just listen and watch this very closely. Amazing verse. For people will live on Zion in Jerusalem. You will never weep again. He will show favor to you as the sound of your outcry. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. The Lord will give you a meager bread and water during oppression. But, this is the most important phase. But your teacher will not hide any longer. Your eyes will see your teacher. And whenever you turn... And whenever you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. Amen. So, so the teacher in capital T, that means the teacher who is a Holy Spirit. This is also like a future. I mean, it's also talking about the future heavenly kingdom, the new, new kingdom of God. But also the, the heavenly life that we can experience today where God says, Lord, should I go this way? Should I make this, this decision or should I do this? Should I go to church on Sunday morning or should I just stay home? Or should I do this here? Should I do that? You know, so, so God's going to show us. God's going to lead us. Everything. And, and that's, what, that's what it says, you know, seeing or beholding our teacher. Beholding our teacher. Seeing our eyes. There's a difference between looking and seeing. You see, looking and seeing is a lot of different meaning. Looking is just looking casually. Looking at the Bible, looking at that. But seeing and beholding is very different. Seeing is and beholding is like I see the Lord. I see that God's moving my heart. He's working in my heart saying, no, 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 no. Don't go this path. Go this direction. That's what this verse says, right? This is the way. Walk in it. What is God saying? The Holy Spirit is saying, this is the way. Walk in it. It could be a path of suffering. It could be a path of pain. But God sometimes takes us through that because he's writing a story. He's writing a story through your life. He's writing it. And I hope you see it. Do you see the hands of God? Do you see the tapestry that God is doing, the work that God's doing through the plain, plain white sheet, white cloth of your life that God's doing? He's doing that, you know. So when we get this vision of God for us, that the four things, right? That we are, we, we are saved, we are delivered by repenting and coming back to God and resting in Him. And we are by finding strength in quietness and strength in for quietness and trusting in the Lord only, not in Egypt's chariots or the worldly lifestyles and the worldly people and the worldly uh, whatever you see in social media and all those things. And we are satisfied in the morning by God's love, by God's loving kindness. And then finally, we are beholding Beholding the teacher. Who's the teacher? He's the Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of God. Beholding the teacher. 
and 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 the teacher will no longer the teacher will not hide any longer it says and your eyes will see your teacher it says and whenever you turn to the left or to the right your ears will hear whenever you make a wrong decision whenever you are tempted to take a wrong decision or tempted to do something that is against god's ways he'll remind you he'll bring you back the loving teacher and god wants to do that in each one of our lives and you know so we saw three things today that we meditate on the things of the past remembering the things of the past that we that we count that we lord give me a heart of wisdom so that i can count the days carefully and then second thing is lord i will not boast about tomorrow i will not boast about tomorrow i will not plan for tomorrow without your will i will submit everything to your will and the third thing is we saw that wisdom for today means that in quietness and in trust i am saved and not only that i am returning to the lord and resting in him i am saved and then remembering the loving kindness of god every day morning when the world is asleep when the whole world is sleeping i'll remember lord your loving kindness and then finally lord i will be faithful to the teacher's paths whatever the teacher says i will do and that's what god's saying you know that that we will enter this new year i don't know how 2022 is going to be okay but i know that god's writing a story in each one of our lives and i hope that we see that we so we see the awesome the work lord when i remember the work of your hands so the work of god's hands is upon our life each one of our life the work of god's hands is upon our life it's not just the work of our hands but the work of god's hands is upon each one of our lives so let's remember that and we will enter this new year you know whatever god says you know just take a moment go home today go and and like we said you know repent if you have to repent rest in god trust in him put come to quietness in in quietness come to god and you will see his loving kindness you will see you will see the teacher lead you in his path let's pray lord we thank you this morning lord we thank you lord that what a great god you are and lord your promises to your children are so amazing lord lord that we lord as we have traveled through this tough year lord it's been a rough year lord lot lot of pain and tears and sorrows but at the same time lord it's been a year of praising you trusting in you growing in you learning from you serving on behalf of your kingdom lord help us to be more of that lord next year lord help us to remember the story that you are writing in our life help us also lord to not boast about tomorrow but lord to return to you in confidence and in trust and in quietness and also lord to behold the teacher the teacher's directions lord help us to be faithful lord to the teacher's leading holy spirit you lead us and guide us lord you lead us in this next 2022 also lord as we commit recommit rededicate our lives to you work in us lord in jesus name i pray amen